Hi there. Now that it's spring in my location, I really thought I should put out a video on how to build a solar callus. First off, what is a solar callus and why do I care about it? Well, first and foremost, I need you to know that a solar callus is the term that we use in the quantum health world to indicate that you've prepared your skin to receive more and more intense wavelengths of light. Um, because from early spring, right, the sun is not as intense as it is in the middle of summer. So that being said, it's smart for us to start adapting our skin's response to the sunlight when the sunlight is just starting to get more intense. And for me, that's this time of year. And it finally feels like spring here. So we've been getting a lot more full body sun exposure. I need you to know a couple of mechanisms and a couple of things you're going to want to do to get the full body sun exposure. Number one, be aware of the fact that we want our tissues to be hydrated. So everything that I talk about with hydration comes into play, but please make sure you're drinking plenty of good quality water. And remember, there's lots of recommendations in my product recommendations guide to help you with that. Number two, seed oils can facilitate the skin to burn. So just be aware of your use of seed oils, which are mainly the ones that I'm concerned with that are in processed foods. I'm not concerned with a little bit of omega-6 that you're going to find in things like naturally occurring nuts and seeds. So again, it's the processed junk food that can also facilitate our, or, or make it harder for our skin to adapt to the sunlight. So what do I mean by solar callus and, or how should I build this solar callus? A solar callus is simply teaching my skin how to build its own endogenous sunlight protection so that as the sun gets more intense, we can receive those wavelengths without creating a big sunburn or massive amounts of damage to the skin. So first and foremost, we have to recognize that the wavelengths of light that we get in the morning, so from sunrise until about an hour and a half to two hours later, till to approximately the hour and a half before sunset, those are where the ultraviolet light is way less intense. And there's parts of it, like, for example, at sunrise and at sunset, there's no UV light at all. So these are actually times where there's a higher ratio of red and infrared wavelengths. And what we use then with those red and infrared wavelengths, when they strike the skin, we help the skin to build more exclusion zone water. That's a really beneficial thing. We help the skin then and the mitochondria in the skin to increase their, what's called their membrane potential or their ability to make more water and their ability to make more ATP. Two key things. So if you're new to sun exposure, simply start with early morning sunlight or, or sunset sunlight and try to get contact, direct contact with the light on your skin. Do that for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, starting to build up. Then when you feel like you've exposed yourself to enough of that, your body can handle that and, and, and you're not receiving any sort of signals that it's too much. So what are signals that it's too much? Um, as the skin starts to pinken, it means that the body has received enough. So just be on the lookout for that. That's called an erythema. It's not a sunburn. It's just a signal that we're going to go into in a little bit uh, details here down the road here in a second. So, you know, take three days a week and just do that exposure. And then once you feel like you've gotten it uh, full body sun exposure as much as you can, right? Full body sun exposure in those early wavelengths, then slowly start to uh, layer on the ultraviolet light. So I call it a UVA window and a UVB window. So I like to go ahead and allow my body to get, oh, starting off five, 10, 15 minutes, depending on what one's sun, sun tolerance is in that early morning UVA or in the evening UVA, right? You'll see those windows using the circadian app on each side of the day. So you get that UVA light for, like I said, five, 10, 15 minutes. And you do that, oh, every day or every other day. And then you also get starting off five to 15 minutes of UVB light, which is the light that when it contacts your skin, it makes vitamin D. So it's not about sitting outside and, and baking in the sun for 10 hours a day. Now, if you can tolerate that and you've built that up, beautiful, enjoy, go ahead. But what we want to make sure we're doing is we're smart about our sun exposure. 
because the worst thing we can possibly do is here sunlight is really good for me and be indoors all winter long and all week long and then all of a sudden it hits 80 on the weekend and we go to the beach and we're outside in this bright intense sunlight for seven hours there is the potential to really actually create a, a sunburn or an erythema or a damage response to the skin when we do it that way. So we want these consistent application of sunlight on the skin, especially in the morning and in the evening to prep the skin because those wavelengths of light actually prepare the skin to receive the more intense UVA and UVB. So that as the summer goes, I always say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm always outside at sunrise. I'm gonna try to get some sunrise um, light onto my skin. Then I'm always out at UVA and I'm going to try to get UVA light on my skin. And then I do make a concerted effort to at least three or four times a week, get a good amount of UVB light onto my skin as well. So what are the things that can change this? Well, in order for my skin to start making its own protective mechanism to be able to assimilate or get or receive more and more sunlight and more intense sunlight, I need to make sure the signal that's entering my eyes in terms of the type of light signaling that my eyes are getting matches the type of light signaling that my skin is getting. So we've got sensors in the backs of our eyes and on our skin and on the surface of our eyes as well, actually, for different wavelengths of light. And so that is why I used to burn all the time when I wore sunglasses, because I was getting a, the signal basically that there's no UV light. So my brain wasn't registering UV light at all because the sunglasses were blocking it. And it was almost, it was almost like it was dark, right? So I was, it sh there shouldn't have been any intense light whatsoever compared to what the signal was getting in my skin. Why would this have caused a sunburn? Well, because when, when my eyes can perceive that there's UVA light, my skin starts to get the message to build up a couple of things. Number one, it's going to build up melanin. Melanin is that tanning pigment. And as I can build up more and more melanin, that in and of itself is a sun protection factor for my skin. When my eyes can sense UV light and my skin get it as well, that's when I'm going to start to make something called urocanic acid, which is another UV filter that my skin can make in response to light. And then lastly, my skin will start to produce a histamine uh, sensation, which is a pinkening. We call it an erythema response. The skin gets a little bit of a pinker color. Um, and what, what happens with that is that's the, the my indication I've received enough sunlight for the day. And if I go much more, much overboard, like, you know, much more in terms of the length of time with this, then there is the potential for my skin to receive some damage. So that's the time where I either put on a long sleeve shirt or put a hat on, sit in the shade so we can still enjoy indirect sunlight, but we just don't need the intensity of it applied directly to our skin. Um, and so those are the things to look for. And that is why I don't wear sunglasses anymore because I want the signal that reaches my brain to match the signal that's reaching my skin. And when I do that and I can layer it on progressively throughout the earlier spring into the more intense wavelengths of summer, my skin can start to build up its own protective factors. And I can start uh, to the point where, you know, in August, we go to our family's cottage on Lake Huron for two weeks and we're outside the entire time. And there is never a need for, for any sort of even covering up because my skin is so ready to receive all of those wavelengths of light throughout the entire day. So it's a really cool thing to experience having been the person who used to burn all the time to now the person who can go outside for two weeks on a beach from sunrise till sunset and not have any issues whatsoever. So I hope this helps to clarify a little bit. Um, remember, slow and steady as you go. And then um, also make note that even just five minutes of that light signaling to your skin is beneficial. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be two hours at a time. So layer it on, go slow, less can be more. And then when you're, once you've applied the less can, less is more strategy, there is a threshold where your body can start to assimilate more and more and more. And so you'll be able to be in that light without creating any potential sunburn issues or damage. Hope that helps and we'll talk next time.